Welcome to today's episode. It's a special one. We're actually doing a demo with a company called Keen Decision Systems. We have Jesse Math, the Vice President of Strategic Partnerships with me. We're going to run through their platform. We're going to run through their planning module specifically. For anyone that is listening in or watching today, Keen Decision Systems is the unified system for measurement and planning and forecasting for over 400 brands. They manage well over $16 billion in media spend annually. I'm really excited to have you with us today, Jesse. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Mr. God. Very excited to be here. Thank you. It is a great time. And I think with you know 2025 coming to an end, 2026, kicking off strong brands, advertisers, they want outcomes. We heard about it at our conference. I hear about it in social posts. I read about it in the trades. Outcomes are becoming more important. And more importantly to that, planning is becoming a bigger and bigger piece of how to allocate those budgets to drive those outcomes. So I'm really looking forward to hearing more. Let's dive in. Jesse, let's take a look what it looks like to set up. So what you're looking at here is our planning only module because that end-to-end -end workflow is what you should do if possible, right? Because when you have measurements and then you move into planning, that's when you get that highly predictive outcomes you know, or, or forecasts about future outcomes. In an MMM, you plan against our data set and the client's data, the brand's data. In this case, you are planning against our database of over $35 billion worth of data science powering this decision making. So let's dive in. To get started, you're going to you know, identify the company name. You're going to identify what category this company com is, is in. We have dozens of different choices for you to choose from. In this case, we're going to look at, uh, at a health and beauty brand. You're going to indicate if it's primarily sold online or offline. These things will impact the recommendations that the planning module will produce. You can take some notes today on what part of this beauty brand are you, are you planning for, the geography, details on the audience, and the marketing strategy. From that part, we're going to say, what's our goal? You're always going to get to plan against revenue, but in addition to revenue, what kind of KPI do I want to plan against? Do I want it to be upper funnel, like website visits and leads? Do I want it to be bottom funnel, like customer acquisition, conversions, orders, specific uh, sales units, right? Then from there, you get to choose your tactics. What do we want to, what, what channels are we considering? And we have over a hundred templated channels for you to plan against, right? And so it can be at the channel level like Google, but we actually unlock a greater level of granularity in decision-making, right? How much do I want to spend on Google display versus Pmax versus prospecting versus retargeting versus search versus shopping? So there's a great level of granularity that you can create plans against. We can input what you spent in the past or you can actually just apply zeros and have the system recommend how you should be spending. Yeah, that was actually going to be my next question was, you know, many times early on in the, in the planning process, you know that you're allocated a particular budget, but the allocation of how that budget is being spent is challenging. Like, especially when you're looking for those types of KPIs, I'm not sure what's going to perform best at first, but I will obviously adjust throughout my campaign to drive the outcome I'm looking for. So being able to input zero dollars and saying, okay, what do you recommend based off of my KPI and my info? It seems like it makes planning easy. Yeah. And it works as an iterative process. Like you could start off with saying with no outside information, Keen, how would you allocate dollars? See our recommendation and then kind of apply your, 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 to it go, you know, in, in terms of constraints and you'll see where you can kind of personalize it from there based off of your ingoing ideas. Cool. Really excited about this screen because the truth is that media is not the only question and the answer. If you want to grow 10% year over year, can you just buy your way? Can you just pay through media to achieve that growth? You know, if everyone could just grow double digits year over year by investing more, likely they would. But the reality is that media interacts with other positive and negative headwinds and tailwinds, right? So this allows you to sh tell the system what else is influencing your performance outside of media, right? This can either reflect your seasonality, 
you can apply your promotion schedule here, say we're really responsive to Amazon Prime Day. We're opening new stores in the back half, and so we're going to have more sales capacity and, and really indicate kind of, you know, why else you have a right to believe that performance is going to go up or down based off of that business environment. So this could be in, in the sake of, like you had mentioned, Amazon Prime Day. It could be Black Friday. You want to push, you know, old inventory, new inventory out harder to hit your profitability mark as a retailer or as a, pr a brand. Is this easily adjustable? Can I just slide these up and down or is this just general seasonality? Boy. Oh, you can. So I can actually go. Yeah, this is the dragon you probably as well. So, so I can say, okay, end of year, Q4, mm -hmm. November, and I want to push. And that's where that push happens. Yes, exactly. Um, if you're a brand new brand that, that has no history, you could basically say, starting out, we're going to be at negative 100. We have nothing, right? And we're going to slowly build up until the right. I have a little case study. Um, you know, there's a, there a brand that wanted to grow to be a $30 million brand. They were a $20 million brand today. They were already investing almost 50% of total revenue into marketing. So they couldn't just pay their way to grow 33%. They were already investing 9 million into 20, right? So they ran our forecasting tool to say that if they optimized their investment in the coming year, media would get, allow them to grow to 25 million. And then they used this chart to say how much external influence, external outside of media spends, what kind of velocities do we need to assume in order to bridge that gap between 25 million and our goal of 30, right? So it allowed them to plan media holistically in light of other environmental changes. You know, you have the platform and you have this solution and you're about to, to click to the next screen. I'd love to see the objectives and constraints that you have, but this can get a little bit complicated, especially for a new brand, someone who doesn't have historical data on this. What are you guys doing to help support them do you have a client success team? Do you have, a, I don't know, a wiki page? Where can someone who's fresh and new to the market or seasoned and just needs better advice and guidance go if they need this help? Fair. Yeah, we really just, we try to meet our clients where they are. To your point, there's, there's a lot of levers to pull. We're innovating on top of like traditional consulting heavy MMM through software and technology to really empower teams to make their own decisions. But again, we do certainly provide a managed service layer, especially to those who need it, to offer guidance, not just on the product, but strategy, you know, strategically um, in terms of the questions that they should be asking and the things that they should be taking into account as they make their meaningful decisions, influencing their business and the results. Here's the fun stuff. We really get to planning. Uh, I just walked you through. You could plan for any time, time frame. And we offer different plan objectives. Optimize a budget right? In this case, we're going to look at how would I spend 3 million? What happens if I have the opportunity to spend 5 million? What happens if I deploy different media mixes, right? I want to look at using eight channels in one scenario, or I want to look at look, using six channels in another scenario, all right? How much do I need to spend by channel by month in order to hit my goals? I maximize profits, spend every channel and every month to the peak of diminishing returns, so you could see how high is up from an, from an efficiency lens. So in this case, we're going to look at a year time frame. We're going to say, how do I spend a $3 million budget? How do I spend a $5 million budget? And from a profitability lens, how much should I be spending? We can apply any kinds of constraints. So you could say, you know, oh, I'm not going to have whatever it is, TikTok creative until April. So don't spend that until there. Um you know, don't spend more than, don't spend less than, because what we don't know is like your brand search volume or the strategic necessity of how much you need to spend with Amazon. So you could apply those as constraints and optimize around them. Right. And you don't know your internal resources, creative, product, manufacturing, right. all that plays a role. So you could, you could basically plan this around ramping up your factory and production or you can plan this around, you know, onboarding additional people to assist or an agency to help with creative. Right. So and moving these around, I could see could be really helpful. And, you know, you can plan around, I'm sponsoring the Olympics and I can't change when the Olympics are going to happen. And I have to spend X amount of dollars in these months, right? So before I watch the results, it's super cool what happens in between that constraint, that constraints screen and the results brief. 
what's going to happen is it's going to take about 30 seconds to run, in which time our backend technology is running a thousand simulations of your plan. Each simulation spends $1 at a time, one month at a time, one tactic at a time to find where each individual next dollar creates the biggest marginal impact. If you think about the power of that, right? Let's say you have 12 months. Let's say you have 10 tactics. That's 120 options. It's running through a thousand times. Now let's say you have a $10 million budget. You know, what's, what's 120 times 10 million, right? The correct answer is it's a big number. It's 1.2 billion options that is running through $1 at a time, a thousand times to find where each individual dollar creates the biggest marginal impact. And as a result, what we get to do is compare side by side the advantages and trade-offs of each one of us plans that we built, right? And the, you know how much my, my business will make from a top line perspective, how much of that revenue will be generated incrementally by the media investment, how much the plan will deliver in the same year of advertising. But in this case, right, in this case, that's $7.53 million on this $3 million investment, which then over time, this $7 million actually becomes $47 million in future revenue over six plus years, right? Same thing from a sales unit perspective. And again, what the ROI is on the next dollar invested, so you can kind of gauge, are we over-invested, under-invested? How much more should I ask for? What should I do with my next dollar? Okay, so serious question here, and I know this is you know a demo of the overall platform. Why would you not use a tool like this, Jesse? Like, just generally speaking, this isn't even part of any of the the idea like this, this seems like it's simplified such an overly complicated process of planning into what took us truly, I, this is maybe 15 minutes, but let's remove the conversations back and forth. If you know what you're doing, you could probably set this up in five minutes. Yeah. You can set this up in five minutes and, you know, again, you, you asked earlier, like, what are, what are brands doing that aren't doing this? And the answer is one, they're going with their gut. Two, they're, you know, looking at what they did last year, or they're looking at a six-month-old MMM to guide these decisions, right? We are just so proud to be an outcomes-based planning tool where we're bringing the accountability of reconciliation. Because what you're going to see from here is you're going to have a monthly spend plan. You're going to have, you know, fighting investment by channel by month. You're going to have, a, you know, this, these are truly dynamic charts so we can see our projected monthly returns from this plan. So you're going to have a monthly forecast, a monthly spend plan, at which point you're going to execute this plan and then turn to measurement, right? That bridge between planning and measurement, where you're going to measure your execution, reconcile the plan, optimize going forward and continue that process in an iterative basis. So once once you've generated this data, and once you have a better understanding of the budget allocation, the channels you're utilizing, the ROI per channel per month, what would be the next step? How do you actually implement this into your media planning? And how, how difficult is that? Yeah, we're, we're thinking a lot about, you know, that bridge between, because, you know, this is today, this operates at a level of, you know, tactic and, you know, it's helpful in terms of what should, how much should I be spending on Facebook, on search, on TV, on out of home by month, given my objectives and my brand that's going to guide you and how you execute. Again, I just get very excited about how this system creates that accountable bridge between planning and measurement. Because at this point, you're going to have a, literally, this is, this is your flowchart on how to go execute. This is your forecast of what's going to happen once you execute. And then that bridges to your measurement solution where you actually hold the plan accountable. Thank you, Jesse. Thanks for joining me today and looking forward to hearing more about what you guys have planned to keen. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.